This video is presented to you by Group 9, composed of my friends Scott and Raj, and I, How. In this video, we're going to talk about synthetic cannabis. Watching our mates drop dead. Synthetic cannabis was a crisis in New Zealand, especially in the year 2018. Uncontrolled movement of the substance brought along deaths in the numbers of thousands, and this is not a mere isolated incident. According to CDC, American poison centers received thousands of reports of adverse health effects in persons using synthetic cannabinoids annually. 2015 was the year with the highest number of calls at 7,794. People who use it are idiots. You don't know what it's going to do to you, according to Clemson University professor John W. Huffman, creator of over 450 cannabinoid compounds as part of a cancer and AIDS research program beginning in 1984. Commercially, SCBs are often packed into joints or bongs or liquefied into vape and smoke. They are often packaged into seemingly innocuous colorful packaging such as Scooby Snacks or Mojos. According to Dr. Paul Quigley, emergency medicine specialist and an expert on synthetic cannabis, the sellers of synthetics deliberately market to the weak and set at low prices to undersell traditional agents like natural cannabis. But how do they work? What are the differences between synthetic cannabis and natural cannabis in their mode of actions in the human body? Physiological effects of synthetic cannabis The molecular structure of synthetic cannabis is similar to that of the cannabis and which is why they have the same mechanism of action in the brain. So here is the presynaptic neuron and postsynaptic neuron. The blue one here, as you can see, is the cannabinoid receptor which is stimulated by the endocannabinoids, for example, anandamide, which is naturally produced by the body. So this endocannabinoid uh, moves uh, retrogradely into the uh, receptor at the presynaptic neuron, and this changes the flow of calcium and potassium in the presynaptic neuron leading to inhibition of action potential which for the inhibits neurotransmitter release and finally reduces the neuronal excitability. This whole thing is known as the presynaptic inhibition. Well, this only occurs when a person does strenuous exercise, then this happens to give a calming effect. However, when the synthetic cannabinoid is taken, it binds to the same receptor giving a similar effect except in this case there's no strenuous exercise and the, the uh, binding is longer giving a prolonged effect. There are two types of uh, cannabinoid receptors type 1 and type 2. So type 1 is abundant in the cerebral cortex, basal ganglia, hippocampus, cerebellum, spinal cord, and the hypothalamus. So the binding of synthetic cannabinoid to this uh, type 1 gives mild hallucination, decreased trust, impact learning and memory, altered coordination, increased appetite, analgesia, and activation of the body's opioid system leading to feelings of pleasure and reward. When it binds to type 2, it takes place in the immune system and peripheral nervous terminal thus giving rise to anti-inflammatory effect and also analgesic effects. Now, I will pass this to my colleague to continue with the presentation. Getting into the pharmacology of synthetic cannabinoid, otherwise known as SCV. It can be divided into two parts, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Let's begin with the pharmacokinetics of SCBs. Pharmacokinetics is the body's way of managing a drug or toxin in the body, and it undergoes four stages, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. When talking about the distribution of SCBs, the endocannabinoid system comes to mind. SCBs are distributed everywhere, like the interstitial fluids and adipose tissue due to its lipocity. But target sites are in the endocannabinoid system. CB1 receptors are densely present in the CNS, the central nervous system, and CB2 receptors are present in the peripheral nervous system, which affects the immune system. Simultaneously, a certain concentration of SCBs metabolizes through two steps, oxidation which uses CYPs, a biotransformator, and conjugation which uses glucogenic acid and the enzyme UGT. For SCBs into active metabolites, 
These active metabolites exhibit a longer duration and amplification of effects in the endocannabinoid system. Finally, it's excreted out of the body through urine, as urine tests have shown that the presence of high concentrations of glucuronide metabolites are present, and this would explain the conjugation part in the metabolic stage. The potency of a drug is its concentration to produce its desired effect. From an experiment through in vitro analysis, it was found that the potency of SCBs were always higher than that of THCs. Here's how it looks with JWH018 and JWH073 in comparison with THC. The efficacy of SCBs can be measured through the cannabinoid tetrad from its endpoints of hypothermia, analgesia, catalepsy, and locomotor suppression. It is a useful characterization of cannabinoid ligands at CB1R. Ligands that fully activate the CB1 receptors to produce a maximal effect is known as a full agonist. When reduced, maximal effect, it is known as a partial agonist. JWH018 and JWH073 elicit greater decreases in absolute core temperatures, hypothermia, when compared to THCs, making them the full agonist and THC a partial agonist. The affinity of SCBs is the relationship between cannabinoid ligand and receptors. Lower Ki value will mean that it has a higher affinity, as seen below. Both SCBs have lower Ki values than that of THC, which would mean it has a greater affinity for that receptor. These studies indicate that both hydroxylated and glucuronidated metabolites of JWH073 and JWH018 can retain significant affinity for CB1 and CB2 receptors. In a nutshell, SCB functions in the same way as their natural producing counterparts, THCs, though with higher potency and efficacy. Regardless of its cheap and fast manufacturing and high demands in commercial consumption and medical industry, they are simply just not ready. However, hopes for them being used for recreational and therapeutic purposes are still within reach. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video.